Hey guys, guess what showed up at my door today? It is the Instax Mini Evo. I ordered this camera about a month ago on Amazon and I have not heard from them since. And all of a sudden, it showed up at my doorstep today. To say the least, today it is an exciting, exciting morning for me. So I wanted to share this exciting moment with you guys. And let's go ahead and dive right into the unboxing. Let's open this thing up. So it supports Google Play, thank God, on my Samsung and then Apple Store if you're an iPhone kind of guy. All right, boom, let's open this thing up. Ooh, nice pull tab. Okay, so we're gonna start with the accessories. What the heck, Fuji? Why are we using micro USB still in 2022? All right, we have a nice neck strap. It's like the standard black leather Fuji neck strap that I never use. And then we have instructions. Wow, 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 wow. All right, here we go. Let's dig right in. Boom. Right, are you guys ready? Wow. Get out of here. Fresh, man. Look at this. It's so beautiful. So this feels like a toy in a way. It's very plasticky. Everything's plasticky and it's meant to be like that. It's fine. Leather accent. I think it's just a rubber vinyl. So nothing too special there. This is your on off switch. Oh, now that we have turned it on, let's see what it looks like. I'm actually pretty impressed by the uh, focusing speed. It's actually not bad. It's actually pretty fast. The half press feels good. Oh, wow. Actually, it looks pretty good. Although it feels a little plasticky, I think this is going to be a very fun camera to shoot on. So we're gonna take it out and give it a spin and see what I think. Let's go. So cool. Anyway, so we're in Fremont, downtown Niles right now. And there's a lot of really cool and old things to shoot, such as this old school looking garage is actually operational. And I'll walk you guys through some of the cool features about this camera and things I like and I don't like about it. And then at the end, I'll give you a conclusion as to what I think. If it's worth the $200 price tag, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> How this camera is designed is so that everything can be operated in a vertical manner. So this is your on-off switch. There's a slight protrusion on the lens so you can actually change the lens effect. So there's also a shutter button in the front that allows you to basically be able to take selfie mode if you want to. So onto the back, you get a four-way D-pad right here. There's no scroll wheel. The menu button, you can go into different types of settings here. This is actually backdoor opener switch so that you can replace your film. This is your back button, your play button. And then I really don't know what the hell this is. On the top, you'll see the color dial right here. This is where you can change the color effects. So you cannot customize these button. This is your effects reset button right here. And this is obviously your shutter. And last but not least, the coolest thing is this is your printing lever. Now that you're done with the shooting, at the end, you have this sweet lever that you just hear. Hang on. It is so loud here. So the cool thing about this camera is that you pretty much have 100 effects. So there's 10 lens effect and then there's 10 color effects. So combine 10 times 10 is 100. Wow. So you can do a lot of really cool things, but to be honest with you, I feel like most of these effects I won't use. They're a li little bit too strong and they're cute. No, you can use it once or twice, but not that I would actually use it enough that I would be willing to spend money to print photos on. So I think my favorite, number one on the color one, is gonna be the monochrome. Also the one that I'm using right now is the mirror mode. So I'm gonna be taking a photo in monochrome plus the mirror. The Mini Evo captures a 4.9 megapixel photo and it does have internal memories which stores up to 45 images. But if you add in a micro SD card, it can store up to 850 images per one gigabyte. It also has a 28 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length with a f2.0 aperture. However, because it only has a one fifth inch CMOS sensor, pretty much everything is in focus. So your shooting distance goes from 10 centimeter 
all the way through to infinity. So one thing I feel like this camera tends to do is overexpose a little bit. Whenever you're shooting with this camera, I would recommend bringing down the exposure comp. I would say go down by a two third of a stop and that's usually a pretty good spot. Sometimes when I'm printing out the photo, even seems a little bit too bright still. So sometimes I even go down by one stop. And it will add some richness and color tone to the photo when you're printing it out as a final product. Should we have the hood down? Yeah, sure, All right, let me see if I can get a good shot. One, two, three. Looks badass, dude. All right. Thank you so much. All right, let me print this out for you. Oh, you print? No, let's do that. Oh, that's sweet. I have some guy over here got a picture of me in front of that. Nice. There you All go, right. man. Thank you very much. Let it develop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Give the old shake <laughs> thing. That's cool, man. Well, I'm glad you like it, dude. Oh, dude, it's <laughs> Wow, that is cool. I'll take a photo of this. I think now it feels very complete. So our next stop is Devout Coffee Shop. It's actually one of my favorite in Fremont. While we're hanging out in the back, we saw a couple doing an engagement shoot. I ended up asking the couple if they wanted a free photo. And of course they said yes, and ended up it was such a cool experience. We did the photo shoot, I gave them the photo, and they were just amazed by the result. I think that's just something special about this type of camera, is that you can give back so cool. to people right away. Another thing I really like about this camera is that you can also use it as a printer. Here I am actually printing out a photo that I took with my Ricoh GR3 and all you need to do is just pull up the photo using the Instax app and then from there you transfer the photo over to the printer aka the camera and then it just prints it out. It's so simple. So I'm inside the app right now picking a photo that I wanted to print. And first thing is you can actually adjust the cropping and also the rotation of the image. Then you can also add in basic filters like monochrome, sepia. And the last step, you can adjust the brightness, contrast, and also saturation of the image. If you're printing directly from the camera, you get to take advantage of the full 1600 by 600 dots resolution. But if you're printing directly using the smartphone app, then you only get the 800 by 600 dots resolution on the image. All right, so here's a quick example of the printed photo versus what you see on the screen. As you can see, it's slightly different and the printed photo of course, the resolution is not going to be as high and also it tends to be a little bit more washed out. Well, thanks for making it this far in the video. Let me go and walk you guys through some of my settings that I found work best in all types of situation. Now, before we go that far on the screen here, you see these little red dots, these two red dots. This is an indicator of how many slices of film you have left. So to access the menu, all you need to do is hit menu. All right. And make sure that you're holding the camera vertical. I know it's weird. Hit menu, you get into the shooting menu. And what I have Facebook detection is on. Okay. I have AF illuminator on, just because I think that the autofocus can use any help it can get. But if you need to be discreet, like you want to do street shooting, uh, you can turn that off. All right, on to the print quality. I think this is extremely important. There's a combination of two things that I think is key here. Number one, my preference of the print quality is on the rich mode. I tried a natural mode, but it just seems so washed out. I'll give you guys an example there, but my recommendation is the Instax rich mode. To back out, you just hit the back button and print brightness. I leave it as standard. I just kept the sound on just because I think this is a fun camera. I like to hear some sort of feedback, so it's okay. Auto power off. I did have it set up, set up as two minutes just because I feel like the battery life on this camera is not the longest. All right, then this is where you can reset your camera format. 
And when you do format, you can actually choose to format the card or the internal memory. And then firmware upgrade. This is where you can update your firmware. That's all the settings in the main menu. Now let's go ahead and walk through the shooting menu. So in order for you to get into the shooting menu, all you need to do is hit the right button on the D-pad. And then so from there, you immediately, you will default to the flash. So I pretty much always have my flash suppressed, meaning it's off. I keep self timer off. Okay, onto the exposure. Now this is key here. If you're shooting at zero exposure comp, it is going to be too bright. So what I normally do is at least minus uh, two third here, but sometimes I, I will even go as far as minus one, just because when you print out the photo, even in the rich mode, it still seems blown out and you're just kind of missing that color, that pop. And this is where you can set up the macro mode. I don't really find this too helpful. All I think it really does is just limit the amount of uh, focusing time uh, from one distance to another. And then here is auto white balance. I just kept it on auto white balance. I find that it does work pretty well. Um, I'm not too nitpicky about it. So I think just overall, I like to let the camera do its thing. It's designed to be simple. So therefore, I don't want to have to worry about all this. Anyway, it's about having fun with this camera. So keep it simple, guys. If you're looking to buy a photo printer that you can also bring with you as a standalone camera or as a perfect companion for your other cameras like your Ricoh, I think the Insects Mini Evo is the one for you. It is such a fun experience shooting with this camera. And then when I go on the street and ask people for the photos and I just give it to them, the happiness that you see on their face as the photo develops it's just priceless. And this is why I recommend this camera, is because it is fun, you can connect with people, and we definitely need more positivity around us nowadays. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please like, subscribe, and make sure you ring the bell icon so that you'll be notified on the next video. If you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments below so that I can make more of these camera reviews for you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.